Hello, my name is James Blake and I'm the Global Head of Cyber Resiliency Strategy at Cohesity. So I want to talk to you today around the Cohesity Claim Room, which is a strategy, set of product capabilities, a workflow that organizations can use to achieve cyber resiliency in this age of destructive ransomware attacks and wiper attacks. So what does the Cohesity Claim Room deliver you? Well, fundamentally, when we have a destructive cyber attack, we need to get from a state of no data being available, maybe even no response capability, to where our production systems are back up and we're able to deliver products and services to our customers. So we need to answer three fundamental questions. What happened? Right? If we do not fully investigate an incident, if we prematurely go to recovery and just do something like a cursory threat scan over those systems where we're just looking for what's in the backup of the encrypted systems that could potentially be malicious, we miss a lot of things, right? Adversaries go through a number of steps before they get to uh, encryption. The MITRE attack framework encryption is stage 14, there are 13 other stages they go through before, and there's this misconception that ransomware is this Swiss army knife of uh, an attack tool that goes through all of these stages itself and then encrypts systems. And in fact, the encryption of the systems might be the least important thing because it's typically done in the last couple of minutes of an attack where the attack could have been inside your network dwelling for at least four days uh, two to four days for a ransomware as a service, but a nation state actor conducting a wiper attack could be hundreds of days. Or some of the more focused ransomware groups, it could be dozens, hundreds of days as well. So they are taking a number of steps. And, you know, they you will still have all of the vulnerabilities in your systems that they exploited. They have malicious accounts that they've created. You can have the emails that your users clicked uh, that launched the initial attack still languishing in their email boxes that need removal before you put those systems back into production. Changes to configuration files, active directory objects, all of these things are parts of the attack. Why did your controls fail? You know, was they, were they missing a rule? Were they ineffective or were they circumvented? And again, the MITRE attack framework we use to describe adversary behavior, there are more Tax, uh, techniques in defense evasion than any other stages in those attacks. Adversaries know how to switch up our endpoint and extended detection and response tools. So we need to understand these before we go into recovery because those threats need to be mitigated. The next question we need to answer is what's the impact of any data that was stolen? Most ransomware attacks these days are at least double extortion, where they've stolen your data and they've encrypted it and set it beyond use. We have regulatory obligations. We may have obligations to third party partners through our uh, you know, third party supply chain. We may have obligations to regulators to notify them. So it's really important we understand the nature of that data that was potentially taken. And then finally, we need to understand how do we stop it again, right? Once we understand the attack, it's only then we understand what we need to patch, what accounts we need to remove, what artifacts of a file system do we need, or do we just not even recover these systems? Do we just rebuild them into a trusted state? And Cohesity has developed a three-stage process in order to answer these questions and deliver a true clean room experience. So the first thing is, we need to recover a trusted capability. Do you trust your security tooling? Okay, and also your security tooling might have been flattened. I've been incidents, in incidents myself where we've been unable to get physical access to the building. Our telephone systems were down because we have voice over IP. Our email systems are down. We have no CMDB. All of these systems that are required to respond, to communicate with law enforcement, with insurers, with your regulators, with your data subjects, with the press, even the internal communication to run 
the incident. I see a lot of ransomware preparedness plans that skip this step. They just don't understand. And, and I've dealt with dozens of ransomware incidents as an incident responder over the years. They just don't understand how bad some of these attacks can be. So we want to get that tooling back up in minutes. We want to be able to do that uh, in a way that's to a trusted state. The next thing we do is we investigate that incident. We understand the how did this happen? And part of the problem we have today is we've deployed a lot of tools out to the endpoint. We rely on forensic remote imaging rather than rocking up these days a lot of the times with a physical hard disk and a write blocker. So our actual security tooling is somewhat hampered by the first thing we do in a ransomware and a wiper attack, which is isolate hosts and isolate networks to contain the incident. And then finally, we have the capability to mitigate those threats, right? We need to be able to remove those artifacts of the attack. We need to be able to bolster those controls. We need to be able to remove those vulnerabilities that are in those systems. So in Kahisti, we kind of have this three-stage process in order to do that. We have initiate, which is bringing up that minimum viable response capability to a trusted state. We have investigate, which is where security operations inside of a clean room investigate the incident. They do this using their native tooling. Um, so the security operations products that they've already bought and know how to use. And this is one of the reasons why we have the Data Security Alliance, where we've brought together dozens of these vendors to work with us to provide a combined solution to that detection, investigation, and response capability. And then we have something we call the staging room, which is owned by IT operations, which is that environment in which they perform those mitigation steps, those bolstering of controls around solutions, and they test to make sure no problems have been integrated. And then we move from the staging room back into production systems. So let's delve into this into a bit more detail. So we've had a destructive cyber attack that may be detected by your native security operations tooling. And this is one of the reasons why Cohesity has gone through so much effort to work with people like Cisco to build integrations into XDR tools. So signals that are too low quality to normally go to an analyst, the low fidelity, low confidence, we can still take those systems and use them as a trigger to take an additional snapshot, giving you more forensic evidence, giving you a lower RPO, should it turn out to be a real incident. But also, Kaisti has multivariate machine learning models that look at multiple aspects and determine whether ransomware or wiper attack is taking place. So once one of these has been declared, IT operations are able to trigger, even if your tooling has been flattened on-premise, from the isolated Cohesity environment, they were able to trigger a restoration of these known good images. And we can put workflows in there in this immutable data store that is accessible to all of your security orchestration tools, all of your scripting. We have workflows, we have contact lists, we have known golden master images and configurations. All of these things can be restored in minutes into your organization to establish the minimum viable response capability. <clears throat> And then we're in a state where we know our tooling is trusted and we can start our response capabilities. So then we move to the clean room, security operations inside of the clean room. What we do here, file system forensics. So the data management solution, unlike traditional disk imaging, where we only know the state of a machine after an incident, we've got the superpower of time travel. So now you can look at what Changes were made to a machine over the dwell time, the amount of time that the adversary is inside of your network. And we're able to mount these file systems at different points of time in minutes within your organization, empowering your security operations team to do something that they wouldn't be able to do without physically going to those systems that are remotely, uh, that are remote, 
because remote imaging won't work when you've isolated those networks, you've isolated those hosts. We're able to take the artifacts that you find during those forensics and then hunt across all of the other back, uh, backed up images to see if that forensic artifact exists. So now we can look, we can take a single machine that has been infected, find a forensic artifact, and then hunt across all of those other machines without a network being up, without the adversary being able to get in the way of that hunting activity, because it's passive, it's happening on the data management solution. And then we augment that with the ability to look for 117,000, over 117,000 indicators of compromise coming from a curated feed with information around those early stages of the attack so that we can make sure we're not just looking for the encryptor, we're looking for information about how they got in, how they maintained persistence, so we can make sure all of those artifacts are removed from the backup before they get put back into production. And then we can classify that delta, tell you what information that is subject to regulatory obligations was contained within those platforms. So that will help you. Now you've established your communications capability with the minimum viable response capability, reach out to those data subjects, reach out to those regulators. Then we have other capabilities, such as our ability to ask questions of the data through our global search capability and our Active Directory capability, initially built to help with Active Directory migrations, but actually helps us uh, understand if there's any persistence mechanisms that have been dropped as GPOs. And it's at this point in time, we move to the staging room. Here, your IT operations teams have two choices. They'll have a manifest of tasks that have been set by the security operations teams during their investigation. We can either rebuild or we can recover. And then once we have rebuilt and recover, and both of those capabilities are powered by Cohesity's capability to uh, deliver either those golden master images or the recovered images in minutes, IT operations go through those mitigation tasks. Security operations may add additional controls. The mitigation systems are then tested to make sure none of those things we've done have added functional performance problems. And then we take one final snapshot because if we haven't cleaned everything, we don't want to go back to stage one. We want to be able to have a good baseline where we only have to make sure if we get reinfected again, we just deal with the things that we missed last time. And then your systems are put back into production. So the end-to-end -end process looks like this. The things in green are things that Cohesity delivers as part of our platform. The things in blue, that's where we work with either processes or the customer's solutions through something like the Data Security Alliance to deliver that capability. It truly is an end-to-end -end capability to deliver true cyber resiliency built on the Cohesity platform because it's Data Protect that provides this capability for us to be able to um, recover those systems very, very quickly, bring that data in for investigation. Our security capabilities and the Data Security Alliance that allows us to do that investigation. The data mobility, which is what able, enables us to move that data from the staging to clean to production very easily. And data access, the smart files capability, empowers that rebuilding of systems and also that delivery of the minimum viable response capability. So we also have our ability and we're continually building on this to provide insights into that data. So security posture management will show you, you know, how protected your environments are as well. So hopefully this has given you a little bit of an insight into Cahisti's approach to clean rooming, this comprehensive approach of getting IT and security to take the power of data on a single platform and deliver true cyber resiliency. Thank you very much.